it's been a bloody time in the stock market. The stocks of Apple are down over 10%, Facebook or Meta nearly 13%, and the crowd favorite super performer chip maker NVIDIA is down by nearly 7% in just one day. Even if you are not invested in these individual stocks directly, let's say you are just invested in Philippine stocks, or if you're investing in index funds by UITFs, this still affects you. Even the S&P 500 is down 3% over this last trading session. And if you look at the S&P 500 over the last three weeks, it's actually down by over 7% already. What's going on? Is it time to panic? Is it time to sell? This is what we'll look to cover in this video. So enough of this intro and let's go. But before anything, if you are new to this channel, hi, I'm Mark. It's nice to meet you. In this channel, I talk a little bit about lifestyle, but I mostly talk about business and investments. So again, thank you for supporting this channel. I know a lot of you have gotten started on investing because of channels such as this. We have a lot of platforms, a lot of tools now out there that make investing very affordable. So even if you might be a small time new investor, unfortunately, this affects you too. So I wanted to give you some guidance, some general perspective of what's going on. So a little over three weeks ago, the S&P 500 reached its all-time high at over 5,600. If you were to look back just a few months ago, the S&P 500 has actually rallied by over 25%. So the S&P 500, again reflecting the sentiment, the performance of the general global markets, is really experiencing all-time highs. So that's the context of how positive, how bullish the market has been. Analysts and investors have been feeling upbeat. Now, one of the more crucial reports that came out last July would be the data on jobs created in the last month from the forecast of 175,000 jobs that were to be created, the actual resulting data was only at 114,000 jobs. This means that there are over 60,000 jobs that were expected to be created that actually didn't happen. So this has put the market into a bit of a panic. Of course, if there are more than 60,000 jobs that were supposed to be created and it didn't happen, this means that there are 60,000 people who have less purchasing power, not even for luxuries, but perhaps basic necessities. Anyway, this job data discouraged investors and saw it as a sign that the economy was weakening, that those 60,000 jobs not created would of course impact the economy in a negative way. So this is one of the reasons why there has been a sell-off in the stock market. More importantly, analysts have been waiting for the Federal Reserve or the Fed to cut their interest rates so currently, the cost of money is high, and when this happens, of course, there are less people borrowing. Higher interest rates would mean that people are discouraged from making any big purchases. They are discouraged from borrowing, which of course can mean that they could be under debt for a longer period. So with these two things as very crucial in terms of the U.S. economy, the interest rate being high and jobs being down would mean that the market, being at an all-time high right now, is very sensitive very paranoid as to how the future will play out. Again, of course, people not borrowing and people not having jobs is not good for their economy. So this sent ripples, waves of concern that ultimately meant the sell-off on the stock market in these last few days. So that's just a bit of a background of what's going on. I just wanted to give you a perspective on things. More importantly, what are we going to do? So the first instinctive thing that you might do as a knee-jerk reaction would be to actually panic as well and sell your positions, stocks, or even UITFs. I mean, sure, if you had been invested in these for a while now, probably the sell-off is still affording you some leeway. Maybe you're still in the positive territory and that's a good thing. So if you wanted to exit your positions and get your gains right now, that's actually an available option, but I wouldn't recommend it. First and foremost, if you have been watching this channel before, I've mostly recommended investing in mutual funds and UITFs. The hard thing about mutual funds and UITFs is that you're not able to pinpoint and define your exit or sell price. You are actually time bound, meaning that you are working with a cutoff. Usually this is 11 a.m. or 12 noon. So instead of being able to specify your exit point and really defining what your gains would be, these cutoff periods would leave us to some vulnerability. So again, with mutual funds and UITFs, there is no way to do them precisely 
as this is a limiting factor, I actually see this as a good thing. You are not too keen on trying to get out of your investments right away. So you are really more in it for the long run. For the long term, the market eventually goes back to its winning ways on a trajectory of growth that eventually works out for you if you just stay put and not panic. So while all this might feel crazy right now, all you have to do would be to look at the historical charts and see that what's happening has happened before. For that, let me get my charts. Again, let's look at the S&P 500. So currently in this morning of August 6th, the S&P 500 is trading around 5200. So while this may be a decline of 7% in the last month, checking when we were last in 5200, we were on the same level around the end of May and the start of June. So this would be roughly 7 to 8 weeks ago. In those last weeks, it rose by 7%, but now it's back down. So I guess it's not so bad. If you think to yourself, where were you last May or June? Probably you were in the same place as you were. You may have had just the same amount of money in your bank account. So I think to be where we were just about 7 weeks ago is not an entirely bad thing. Again, going back to my point earlier, around October 2023, the S&P was trading around 4100. So 4100 against its peak a few weeks ago, that's already a gain of 25%. So I think a gain of 25% in less than a year is quite astronomical, is quite magical. I mean, we can only expect so much from the S&P 500. So this is just in the last year. In fact, it hasn't even been a full year. Just to also give you perspective, around July last year, the S&P 500 was around 4,600. And so when it dipped around 4,100, from July to October, that is a dip of about 11%. So again, after that 11% dip, it did rally to a peak of over 25%. And again, this is just all in the past year. If we were to go back a little into 2022, the S&P 500 was trading around 4,800. And about a year later in 2023, it dipped to 3,600, which means that this was a dip of over 25%. And this is just in the last two years. If you were to even zoom out further, you'd see that these dips do happen, but eventually they do recover. So that's what I'm letting you know here, that these things do happen. Even if the news all says that it is time to panic and it's time to sell, when you look back, there's not much need for panic. All you have to do is look at the historical charts. Right now, we're panicking about a dip of 3% in one day. And yes, that's sizable. But again, if you look at the historical data, you see that while it's currently down, it eventually does go up again. Maybe it will go up right away. Maybe it will go down further. But again, if you zoom out, get a better perspective, then you'll see that it's not really something to cause alarm or worry about. So with this in mind, what am I going to be personally doing? Again, I'm just speaking for myself. Well, I've always advocated regular investing. In fact, I've had a series of videos before about investing $1 daily via BPI's US Equity Feeder Fund. So with BPI, you can even invest 50 pesos through your regular peso account. Small investing lets you average out your cost. So if you are investing a little when it's high, investing a little when it's low, then you're able to spread out your cost and come out with a better average. I was investing via BPI for a long time, but since they increased their trust fee per annum to 1.5%, I've actually started using East West Bank more. With East West Bank, it's only at 0.5% per annum. The minimum investment for East West Bank is $200. So I'm actually able to invest maybe every other month. So I am also doing that regularly. Perhaps it's not as regular as the $1 daily strategy, but I've showed you that this strategy can actually work out looking at the historical performance. So again, that's $200 every other month when I'm able to reach that minimum. So I will continue to employ that strategy, hoping and seeing that it will most probably work out. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm actually looking for these dips. I'm looking for these opportunities wherein I can be more aggressive, investing more of my money because I'm seeing that the market right now is really correcting. So this is now an opportunity for all of us to be looking at bargains, so to be able to come in to find where these stocks could bottom, these ETFs, that is something that you can look out for. How to do that, that's actually the hard part. You can read charts, you can look at fundamentals, but as always, your guess is as good as mine or maybe even better. 
So basically, I'm taking this opportunity, this panic phase, to continue investing regularly and to be looking for bargains. As Bo Sanchez says, when the market dips, this is like the store going on sale. So you just have to be finding the right bargains, the right stocks at the right price, the right index funds, so that you are able to really make good on this in the long-term perspective. So yes, especially if you are new to investing, take this time as a learning experience. This is actually a good time to see how the market reacts, what events happen in the global and local perspective that affect one another. In as much as your portfolio might be down, I would not feel too bad about that. Again, just zoom out, look at the charts in a historical perspective. So what do you think about all this craze in the market right now? If you've liked this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thanks again for watching guys and happy investing.